So that, that's the sensors on Orion that will allow Orion to navigate up to objects like the space station or a lunar lander or a Mars vehicle well, Sam, or an asteroid. I'm glad you brought that up because obviously the first application probably would be docking with the ISS. Potentially. Uh, it's going to depend on what NASA's plans turn out to be, but we think initially you would do some missions in low Earth orbit just to sort of get your feet wet, right, yeah, practice right. using the spacecraft, yeah. and then build to progressively more distant destinations. Sure. So one of the first destinations beyond Earth orbit, or beyond low Earth orbit, might be to go to the L2 Lagrange point that's on the far side of the moon. Okay. And from there, astronauts could operate a rover and a sample return system that would be landed separately on the far side. And what's interesting about the far side, partly, is that we've never sent any robots or humans there before. Right. But there's a really big crater called the South Pole Aiken Basin, and it stretches from the South Pole all the way to the equator on the far side. That's one of the biggest, deepest, oldest craters in wow. the solar system. And it's so deep that it actually punched through the moon's crust down into the mantle wow. underneath. Wow. So if we could get samples back from those locations, we could learn about the inside of the moon, not like just a, the surface. like a big swimming pool. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. But we also, I mean, you know, the Transformers clearly have already been there. So <laughs> we, we just need to maybe use some of that technology. Borrow their technology. Back. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> so, very good. This is very interesting. So, um, now, will this current mod, you say, uh, has there been any development on the bigger ship? to take us further than the moon yet? Th there hasn't yet, and it will depend on what destinations get picked and how long the trip is. Now, one of the things that we've discovered in, in trying to do mission designs for uh, beyond lunar missions is that uh, the number of asteroids that we know about has increased enormously in the, just the last 10 years. If you think back to, say, the mid-1990s, when we were just starting to recognize what a threat asteroids could be, there were only about, say, five or 600 known near-Earth asteroids when the Bruce Willis Armageddon right. movie came right. out. Mm -hmm. Today, we know of... And, and because, Good reference point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> now, because of the interest and the recognition of that threat, NASA's put a few million dollars a year into detecting asteroids. Mm. And telescopes and sensors have gotten to the point where even amateurs, sophisticated amateurs, can track asteroids. So there are now more than 8,000 known wow. near-Earth wow. asteroids just in it's that last 15... It's frightening that we did not know about the other 75... It, it, it is, right? Well, out there. And what's even more frightening is that that's only maybe 3 to 5% of the possible asteroid targets. Wow. So the good news is none of them are that we know of are on a, an impact course for Earth yet. <laughs> but um, it also good. means that there are a lot of potential destinations up there. What we want to pick are the asteroids, not necessarily that come the closest to Earth, right. but the ones that are going by Earth in the same speed and direction that, that Earth is gotcha. around the sun. Gotcha. And that makes it easy for us to get out get to there. them. Well, I, I'm just hearing in my earpiece, Josh, we have less than 14 minutes to go for launch. <laughs> We're still a go. Good, right now. good news. It uh, looks like uh, we may get lucky because I don't. I see blue skies. Yeah, uh, the, the weather didn't us, look so. very good yesterday, but it's looking pretty good today. I think maybe a million people all crossing <laughs> their fingers had some effect, right? Yeah. Well, Josh, I want to thank you so much for stopping Thanks by for today me. to talk about Orion, MPCV, and... and we had a chance, to, we were down at PA-1 to see yes, the, the right. Paddleboard uh, 1 launch test. That was phenomenal. And we look for, for great things to come up over the next uh, few years with great. Orion. And uh, good luck to you. Thanks a lot. And when we come back, uh, we have uh, two special guests on. We have uh, two people from the tweet-up that took place here yes. over, over the past week. And we'll learn more about them. And, and I think we have a weather uh, person. Yeah, I'm hoping that, we'll, that we get a weather update. That's right. <laughs> right here on set. You're watching NASA Edge. An inside great. and outside look at all things NASA. Hey, we're here with Terry White, who's the project lead for the Orbiter's Thermal Protection System. How you doing, Terry? I'm doing all right. How are you? Pretty good. Now, you've been here since the beginning. Yes, sir. I, I'm one of the few that actually worked original build of Columbia and Challenger that's still working out here now. now. Some of the, your, your colleagues refer to you as the old guy. What? Correct. Are you okay yeah, with that? Because I've been around for a while. <laughs> now, behind us, we have Atlantis, which is the last rollout for the shuttle program. And what are some thoughts? You know, a lot of people are sad about the program ending in that, but when we started it 33 years ago, or when I started 33 years ago, no one figured that the program would last that right. long. You know, the original plan for the shuttles was they flew 100 flights, but you were going to fly 10 or 12 a year, so, right. you know, they wouldn't last 30 years. Okay. Now, in looking at what you're responsible for, the thermal protection system, I mean, how many tiles are you, are you putting on? This orbiter has 24,182 tiles on it. Oh, wow. But we only replaced 
161 for this flight. So it is a good reusable insulation. And about 25% of those were for a modification. We put a stronger tile on. So we really didn't have to take the others off other than we came up with a stronger tile. Yeah. Now, what's that made of? I mean, I'm looking, okay. at, looking at that, that uh, sort of, it's like a mosaic, not a mosaic, but a... Um, a quilt. A quilt, yeah. Yes, it okay, is. Yeah. And it is, it is a heat resistant quartz fabric. Okay. Okay. It's made just like a quilt. It has aluminum batting on the inside. Okay. Now, Columbia and Challenger were not built with the blankets on there. They're okay. called fibrous insulation blankets. Discovery was the first orbiter built with them. But over the years, we learned that we could actually make those thinner. So we took off the thicker blankets and replaced right. them with thinner blankets to save weight. And then the other white areas you see that looks kind of smooth right. up there, that's a Nomex felt with elastomer coating. So the reason why you had the black tiles, that's where the, the most heat is going to be. Correct. Uh, yeah. yeah, the black tiles will see up to 2300 degrees, right. where the blankets will see up to 1200 degrees okay. Fahrenheit, and the frizzy, the smooth white material okay. is good for up to 700 degrees. And you're using carbon-carbon leading? Leading well, edge just, is reinforced carbon-carbon as well as the, the nose, nose cap okay. and then just behind the nose cap an area is known as the chin panel okay. is also reinforced carbon-carbon. It's an area that originally was tile but right. because the extreme heat they saw were actually melting the right. tile in that area so we gave up a weight. We took off the lightweight tile and right. put on the heavyweight reinforced carbon-carbon but we didn't have any more problems. So. Well Terry, this is great having you today. We're going to Appreciate welcome it. information. Lance is ready to go. Hey, welcome back to NASA Edge, an inside and outside look at all things NASA. Uh, we are here with two special guests. Uh, we have Aggie Astronaut, yes. that's uh, Carrie Bean, and we have a Geek Mom, Correct. Shannon Moore. Correct. We actually had a, a NASA tweet up here this past week, the STS-135, actually final shuttle tweet yes. up. Yes, yeah. Uh, and you guys were here for pretty much the whole week? Yes, well, yes. I'm here for uh, till the 13th. Till the 13th? And yes. I'll be leaving Sunday, but we came uh, driving in with a group, and we visited Stennis on the way, and and having a good time. Oh, phenomenal. Yeah, they had a chance to uh, tour NASA Kennedy and uh, meet a lot of cool people here, astronauts. Uh, and so I uh, just want to kind of share your experience with us. It's the final mission. Atlantis is right yeah. behind us. Uh, what, are you, what are you feeling, Shannon? Uh, just a tremendous sense of awe to be here. Uh, I have been uh, at a shuttle launch for STS-129. It happened to also be Atlantis. So it's just real special to be back here and see her launch and to know it's the final launch of the shuttle program. It is bittersweet, but it's more, it's, I'm, I never thought I'd be back here, and uh, it's just an honor to, to be here and see her uh, take off and uh, to see all the people assembled to, to, to wish her well. Now, we have to have uh, a weather person with us uh, <laughs> who's a, yeah. uh, a graduate from the uh, University of Texas A&M, yes. and you're getting a PhD in meteorology, so what do you think? I think it looks wonderful right now. There's big beautiful blue patches in the sky. Um, I started forecasting a couple days ago and I was like, you know, I think it's going to be okay during the launch window. If it rains, it'll be after at like one or two o'clock, but I think we'll be good and it looks like my forecast is holding out. Well, thank you so much for allowing us to have this beautiful weather <laughs> yeah. and uh, it, you can you make, you can do that as your, maybe your D, a PhD dissertation or something like that. I, I do yeah, have a weather keep machine. Doing that, that'd be yeah. great. Yeah, I have a weather machine. I fine tuned it. Hope the undergrads wouldn't touch it while I was gone, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now you're you guys are extensive Twitterers or tweeters. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, what's it like, uh, you know, uh, being in a, in, a, in a Twitter universe and talking space uh, quite a bit? Uh, I've always been a space geek, so this is a wonderful way to plug into the community, uh, not just of other space geeks, but to the people that are actually doing uh, exploration and science and research. And uh, you know, I wish this existed when I was growing up. Uh, and then it's a way for me to give back because, of course, I'm learning along the way and I can share information and answer questions. So it's a fantastic resource. And you guys got to meet a lot of people here at the Tweet Up. It was up at the 150, I believe, yes. at the yeah. Tweet Up? Yeah. Uh, probably my favorite was Elmo. Oh, and... <laughs> Elmo has a highlight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we loved Elmo on the show. And I, I still think Blair and Elmo are, are related some, somehow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There might be a link. Yeah. Now, yeah. now, do you guys uh, keep in touch with the, the folks that you meet here uh, at the Tweet Ups? There's a, there's a very strong and... ongoing community. I mean, a lot oh, of yeah. us, uh, even if you haven't met uh, yet, the, you've connected online so much. So there's people that I've been talking to for many months or perhaps a year even. And it's like, finally, yes, I can see you Get in person. Them. Yeah, but it's, it's such a cohesive community. We run into each other at different events, space up events and tweet ups and informal things. So it's a, it's a terrific community to be a part of. Well, if you're, if you're definitely uh, space fans out there and you're on Twitter, I really uh, highly suggest that you follow these two. We have at Aggie Astronaut yes. and at A Geek Mom. Correct. Uh, they're, they're wonderful people. And uh, thank you so much for, for being here today, thank being a part me. of this event. 
Uh, it's historic. Absolutely. And uh, take as many pictures as possible. And we won't let you go because we want you to get a great spot for the launch. Thank you. We appreciate and, uh, it. And take as many pictures. So uh, yeah. enjoy it. All right. Fantastic. All right, You're watching NASA Edge. An inside and outside look at all things NASA. Hey, we're back live. Uh, you see a, a live look at Pad 39A at NASA Kennedy Space Center. Shuttle Atlantis is uh, getting ready in less than uh, about five and a half minutes. And, uh, you, and you can see the crowds the there. Uh, this is a, a very large crowd. There's there's actually a crowd you can't see that's even further back than that. And uh, it, it's just exciting. Uh, everyone is, I think, we really thought we wouldn't make it today. So I, I think there's just a real sense of relief and excitement in the crowd right now. And we did have a, a, a question, uh, I think, on our, either it was our mm -hmm. Facebook page. Yep. Uh, Jackie Cortez, yes. who is also uh, a special co-host. Uh, she's actually watching us. Yes. And we want to give a big shout out to Jackie. Yep. Hey, Jackie, how you doing? We miss you. Yes, but uh, there's one important distinction with with Jackie now. She's married. Yes, she's yes. no longer Jackie Cortez. Yes, she's Jackie uh, Cortez Wang. Yep. And uh, as such, uh, limited appearances here on NASA Edge, right. you know, we'll... We still love her. She's still part of the team, um, but uh, you know she was unable to make this trip, and hopefully we'll get to see her soon. Absolutely, and we, I guess we can give a shout out to her husband Derek, uh, right. who is a uh, an alumni uh, alumnus of uh, University of Alabama. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. We have to yeah. give him that. Yeah, his absolutely. And so uh, this is it. This is it. This is the uh, <laughs> exciting moment. We have uh, less than uh, five minutes, four and a half minutes to go. Uh, um, and this, this is uh, unbelievable. Looks like we're actually gonna we're gonna launch. And, and it's really great because. I, I can't really even express adequately how much apprehension people had about the weather, especially right. yesterday uh, and through the night when you just didn't know what you were going to get when you got here this morning. So we're we're very excited. You can see it's clear out. Uh, that's not clear, but uh, that's we don't. That was know actually that. from uh, yesterday. Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's the weather. Yeah, that, that's yes, from yesterday. of course. That was the rain from yesterday. That's what it looked like yesterday. It, when you were plan making launch plans yesterday, this is what you were seeing, <laughs> and you were weeping. And, and we thought for sure that it wouldn't be a go today. Yeah, because so of you the see the ground there too I mean it's flooded and and now people are able to stand out there but even still uh, uh, just a really uh, really uh, tough time so very good yeah you can see it's a live shot from uh, pad 39a very exciting I'm sure the uh, you know the uh, the heart rate of the four astronauts is, are increasing. It's increasing a little bit, and they're getting pumped up and ready to go. I, I going really, through final checks. I was going to say, and it's it's interesting because everything we've heard about astronauts is they're they're so trained, they're so focused. But I gotta imagine there's a real sense of uh, enthusiasm about being the the astronauts to fly the last shuttle mission. And I think you see a, start to see a break in the clouds right over the pad, so we may be able to see. Oh. Uh, a little more than we did for STS-134. Yeah, it's interesting because on 134 there was low cloud cover um, and it gave us about a 30 second uh, window, window to, to, view it. Uh, to view it. And uh, maybe we'll get more, you never know, but all things are looking good at the moment. And that's Atlantis on the pad. And Look, we want to thank everyone to today uh, who's watching this broadcast. Uh, thank you for joining us and sharing. And, and sharing uh, this experience with the folks from NASA TV on the, on the education channel. Uh, this is uh, a wonderful uh, opportunity. This is it. This is yep. uh, history in the and making. And all those that worked on the, the shuttle, like we saw during the rollover with Atlantis, people have spent uh, better parts of their careers making this kind of event happen. Thanks to them. And uh, just hats off to everybody. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think we're just going to stay on the feed at this point yes. and let everyone enjoy the, the launch. And then we'll come back after the launch and uh, wrap things up. With some up. final thoughts. But enjoy the launch of STS-135, the last shuttle launch, shuttle Atlantis. Uh, Watch an S-Edge. Yeah, for ET, LH-2, pressurization. Solid rocket booster camera is being activated.
Guimarães.